Standing out to you here. I'm going to leave this one to you. Just briefly run me through anything that catches your eye. Uh, nothing actually standing out too much. I mean, uh, expectations the wide open, different. Uh, potentially, yeah. That's uh, a, a slight adjustment on the side of crew for maybe what we we're expecting. Mm -hmm. And actually on the side mm -hmm. of Fnatic, a little bit of switch up as well. I'm potentially looking to pull something out of the bag here. I mean, I said I wouldn't expect it in game one, but it might actually be on the cards here for Fnatic as just about oh. to get game one underway here, Lauren. All right, deep breaths. We are about to dive into game one of Masters. Fnatic up against crew, Latam facing off against the EMEA, the European side, of course, of Fnatic here. Going to kick things off, and it'll be crew on the defensive side and Fnatic on the attack. And you've got to keep your eyes on those young guns coming in. You've got your Dirk, you've got Magnum. These two are heavy hitters. And it looks like a quick piece to begin with. Already Dirk are just going to put his body on the line, fly right in towards the site. Actually come through, yes. Yeah, uh, two for one in favor of crew, actually, and B&J, actually to find another one and we'll find the third doma falls now down to just magnum as he comes up short he comes through try and swing on we'll get that headshot through tag down to about 7 hp a lot left to do and klaus actually gonna close that one out and uh actually, like you said a very fast piece coming through towards a side but well handled by crew in particular bnj fanatic did you just try and go quickly against the latam team fanatic hey no, 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 no. Don't be doing that. Don't be hold, hold, hold your horses here. Um, but a great start. And I think that just proves the firepower that we know is with this region specifically. But we have to now see what they can keep doing down the line. This will bring the economy favorably. And of course, we get to see the new UI as well. Look how cool this looks. You get to see everything. This is great. But also huge shout out as we are going to be seeing a bit of a lighter investment. No armor to supplement the sheriff, some bits and pieces for Fnatic. Whereas crew, of course, going on the full on SMG buy up. Unless Fnatic start to turn some of this, we can kind of give a big shout out to our observers as well. Prius, Sapphire and Yeti bringing you all the action live from in game and you gotta love your observers they're the ones that the make it look squad. damn good exactly right like can't mess around with that but into the game we go looking at the utility usage this looks very similar to what i came to expect at least watching crew's previous games coming into this tournament especially delzik being such a integral piece playing in towards garage and i'm sure Fnatic have looked over the same things but doma gonna claim a quick kill out of nowhere bnj the danger man from the last round is now down this is on the back of actually well, the presence shown on the side of Kromi, B and J and Mags are actually showing their face over on. Hey, Delzik now just anticipating Magnum drifting through into garage this, here, but we'll this back contact away. on A. Yeah. If they if they just go subtle now, yes, Nagzet does find one, but they're gonna lose position on long. This is where they could maybe overwhelm, but no! Out of nowhere, the huge deny shut down. There was so much opportunity for maybe a spike plant, get a little bit of a punish, maybe take away some of that economy, but now it's just in tatters. Magnum, great player, but this one, way out of check. A really, really nice round once again from Crew. I love actually, just in the early round, making a really good read, right? The, the fact that Fnatic are going to come in, try and take close contact in sewers, uh, just throwing the wall down, just to put the brakes on. Um, we know, obviously, Fnatic like to get early round control in terms of Looking forward to this. <laughs> this lines up perfectly here and the last comes through doma able to trade that one out it's a little weapon switch onto the classic for the last a really nice round from nagzat okay so we do have the rifles now we do at least have the what we like to call the bonus round for crew so they will be sticking on the lighter purchase but so as expectation should be this should be a fanatic round but let's see what damage could be done by crew here so far Looking for potentially the fight, or at least the shoulder peak towards long, and that's going to get darker at least on notice. But they are still holding a default for Fnatic. Little jump spot there. Durka will find ahead at least. No damage put through. And Fnatic now, I guess, anticipating them trying to convert these weapons. But nobody from crew actually overextending too far. They come through, find. Well, no information, but information nonetheless through sewers here. Actually, that's going to force a drift away from a science some aggression elsewhere. I've got to keep this clean. If you are on the fan side of Fnatic, you want to see them not get, I guess, lax in this by any account. Klaus on the other side waiting. Boast is starting to build towards at least indicating the hit may be coming through. You can see the utility put towards A. He's facilitating that. Maybe a quick flank for him. B and J, they're going to get all the information. And the dash does come out from Durker. He's on the side. The snap comes in. No damage done yet for crew. And here comes that lurk from Bosa. Lovely work from him. Good read on these rotations. Going to be outnumbered now. Needs to keep that rifle if they want to keep this clean. 
Yeah, Klaus comes through, pinched perfectly. So we get one upgrade here. Will they consider coming through and finding or trying to find a little more damage? You creep through a link, but the wall down over spawn, I guess, going to change the viability, at least to make it a little harder for them to come through and find it here. Maybe just try and keep some of Fnatic on the site to die to the spike, but I don't think anybody's really going to make any moves here, Lauren. No, this is... Klaus can keep that rifle. Delzik, if he could get an exit or two, that's kind of the game plan. Not going to be able to get any Fnatic out of there. Actually does get a little closer. Nah, no one to be found. Going to just opt for the spike's way out. And Klaus can at least bring that through to the next round. I guess this is a tick in the box for Fnatic. They did do a nice clean round. They kept four rifles up. They convert and get themselves on the board. Crew did a little bit of damage. I'm sure they would have liked a little bit more out of that. Yeah. You know, if they could have cost them a couple more rifles, that could have been huge for the economy. But... This is as we expected. Now we get to the fun part, right? This is where it gets a little bit more interesting is this first real buy round coming in. And what does crew look like in these? Because we know what Fnatic look like. We've seen a little bit more of them. It's kind of been tried and tested to an extent, but crew are a little less of a known quantity. Indeed, it's you know, trade out sky flashes at least on A here. Nags once again set up to greet this aggression on shore. Actually doubled up Ooh. with a trailblazer. Durka will find it. Yeah, Dirk is looking pretty loose here. That's great for him as well. Just that confidence is key. Young players starting off really well, building up confidence could be massive. So that's a big work for him. The Seekers, as you highlighted, going to come through. And it doesn't give too much, really, at this point. Sky is left to isolate and kind of hold A on their own. And you can see the kind of causation and the effect now of just being that player down. And Fnatic looking elsewhere for that next step. Delzik could be on the chopping block, but he's solid at holding this. I mean, other than the first blood, it's... I was going to say, other than the first blood, it's a big win there for Fnatic. They could drift away with the Seekers invested also. Nobody from crew actually going to come over. B and J ain't now trying to tuck in towards oh, sandbags. Timing. Yeah, timing works out so perfectly for Fnatic. They're going to get everything going for themselves. And once again, that constant pressure now in the back of their minds of that mid-lurk coming out from Boaster. But Klaus with a really good shot towards Durka denies that quick start. Now, it's going to at least kind of slow them down for a second, cause a little bit of a pause for thought, but the rest of the site's going to be sworn, but Klaus denies a huge 3k from him. Those two kills were integral. Now, Boaster feels like a mile away. The spike's now going to be lost. Boaster has to pick up the pieces. Finding Delzik is the first step. Klaus a little less than ideal on HP. Big work from Boaster. This is scrappy, and somehow Fnatic pull it back. <sighs> a great recovery on that. Klaus does absolutely fantastic to find all those kills over on a but somehow i mean I, I thought boaster was potentially going to be lost in that lurk there was this there was a moment where again the situation comes through where they're able to potentially pinch him in b but he, he somehow finds both of them through a link and uh, right there i gotta say that's that's kind of a miracle a, a blessing for Fnatic to close that round out with how things went down on a side because they lost the spike as well lauren it was deep on the site I, th I thought that was done for, but yeah, Boaster pulling it out of nowhere for this, and that's a huge bonus for these boys having your IGL not only operating on that sort of level, but also bringing it through in the game as well. So, Randy Dirk are going to just try and keep that economy looking healthy for him, going to depend on the knives out for this one. Of course, on the other side, we do have Sheriff's a little bit of armor around it as well. Klaus and Nags are going to at least opt for light armor and the rifle in the hands of Mazino. I'm playing much deeper this time around and Fnatic kind of leaning towards Garage initially. I, I guess just trying to get a feel for whether or not there's a stack anywhere. Maybe playing with lesser weapons, just trying to close the distance and get the most value out of them. But 50 seconds left and no real moves made by Fnatic as they now look to creep towards the entry of B. Now there is an alarm bot there, so we're going to have an opportunity to recover, should they? But Klaus actually going to spot both members out outside B. A little bit of damage goes through, but no kill. Yeah, the Viper will at least temper what could have potentially built off that Sage Wall. But there's Magnum still finding the Danger Man who did have the rifle. That won't be able to be filtered back. Now we look at potentially the damage to the economy. And at the moment, they're not finding too many chances. Dirk is going to slowly fall away from this, get himself the rifle that was lost. So at least going to keep everything tickety-boo for them. And the last three still just looking for a chance to do some damage here. And really, Fnatic aren't giving them many opportunities. No, they now find themselves in a 3v5 retake here. And not an awful lot left to do. Once again, I just 
looking to get some damage on both the catches. Tags inside. Garage Durka comes through. The pinch is perfect. Magnum close things out. Delsic falls and a flawless round there from Fnatic. Really, really well considered. Once again, like taking all the time that it needs to in in mid, uh, you know, anticipating that aggression from crew. And it never actually came through. It's only really Klaus taking contact on B that, uh, you know, on both sides of the coin there was, was the turning factor. As soon as that comes through, Fnatic lean back in towards Garage. They know that nobody's holding close there. And leave C wide open. I want to see what this double stack on short they might do for crew here, because they're at least going to come back in with the buy. See if they maybe get a little bit aggressive. And it's going to be Durka on the other side as well. So yeah, B and J going to be posted up for the fight. And yeah, just straight up loses oh. it. Durka is on today and he's going to double down on it as well. Massive entry work from Durka. And you can see the pace he's going to work with. He knows the two that have been playing the site. Yes, Klaus does lean over here, but with it being so quick and so successful, they've got it all. This, this is a... <laughs> This is a wrap in my mind. They're already backing yeah. away towards this. Yeah, 30 seconds in, you see already crew have gone all the way back towards C site. Just gonna give this one up. Yeah, maximum oh pro progress. Actually, Diamond's just gonna retrieve the orb as well. They know they've got the time and the space to do so. I mean, what's I wonder what the, how good's Fnatic's money at this point? Could they go for a chase to get some of these guns away? I think at least three of them, yeah, are going to have the opportunity to come, but whether or not Fnatic want to punish this. I mean, Doma's now one away from the res. Durka three out of six on the Blade Storm as well. Could potentially come through and get a little more ult progress and, like you said, punish the economy of crew even further. And utility-wise as well, if you look at crew, other than the two snake bites, you see there'll be a little bit of a repurchase here. It's fanatic. Do creep towards garage. Might just take a little poke. I don't think they'll try and commit to this. Yeah, you can see Delta desperately trying to hold on to this. Doesn't want to lose these rifles. Three, you can kind of spread the wealth around and kind of drop out the rifles, maybe try and build up a bit of a buy around it. But we're also going to highlight Mazino and Delzic off to a bit of a quiet start. Mystic the same. Um, but again, if you're facilitating the pieces of Sky, I don't mind too much. But Delzic, I mean, the hits haven't really been coming their way. They have been predominantly towards that A site, I guess, apart from that kind of buy against a little bit of a, like a half buy towards C. But still, I'd like to see them both finding a little bit of form just to see the full power of crew. Because right now, Fnatic are starting to look comfy. Like the money's getting a little bit too comfortable for me. You've got 8.4, 6.3, 7.7. They're yeah. starting to get all of it building their way. So hopefully they can maybe find an answer to this. And, and I don't know how you shut down someone like Durka, who's just already off to a belting start. Yeah. The man is just flying through this. And I mean, the big thing is economy-wise now, Fnatic can start taking a few more risks, right? Uh, they now have a little bit of freedom to play around with things on the attack. As I assume we do have a little bit of a, a tactical pause coming through. Mm -hmm. Probably on the side of crew, maybe to just reconsider things here. I think you make a good point, and uh, really, uh, again, look towards the new guys for Fnatic. Yes, we can talk about LAN experience and maybe a few jitters along the way, but for me, it's a, it's a huge positive. It goes without saying to see Durka, you know, yep. put on those, just uh, string it together a couple of kills early on. Uh, those, I guess, regionally would have been the concerns, right? Coming in would yes. be, uh, there is a chance that, you know, Fnatic, uh, I guess, transition from the roster changes. There's still going to be issues. Now, the, the thing that comes to my mind as well, and this is something that I guess you can talk about when it comes to younger players especially, is the difference a couple of good rounds can make. That confidence that, oh no, I'm good. Like, every, like I've got that hot hand today, everything feels fine, like I'm, I'm smooth, I'm feeling the game out. And for Durka to have a good beginning, that's just a huge confidence boost for him. That means that suddenly all that pressure that maybe he was feeling, just gonna be alleviated instantly, just gonna be feeling out the game. If he keeps that up, fantastic for him that's a really big tick in the box for Fnatic now for crew on the other side I think I want to see what answers they come up with here I want to see how they try and deny these uh, stunning entries from Durka I mean the guys found form early and it's it's hard to deal with we've seen other teams having the same problem um trying to shut down big boys on the entry right it's it's not an easy thing to instantly counter there's something about it you know you've got Yampy doing something similar as well so well I want to see what the answer is from crew yeah, and the problem is, is the other side of what we just saw with that little bit of aggression into sewers. I, I call it a set piece, if you like. Um, 
uh, that being shut down straight away, I, I don't want that to be, you know, crew just thinking, oh, we're not going to get away with that. Mm. We, we can't do it again. Because that, actually, like I said, before this, this game started, before this map even started, crew need to find value in those unorthodox rounds, the ones where they just make a slight adaptation, right? Because um, I think if they just sit deep and try and react to what Fnatic are doing, we know how how quick and how well rehearsed and choreographed some of the sight hits from Fnatic can be. And actually with Dirk hit, Durka hitting shots like that, again, they don't even need to rely on that. They just need to rely on Durka kind of going in and bread and butter playing entry. Just heard that viper just constantly jumping on the box thank you observer he's just yet he's like no 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 we're going up to the rooftops get away <laughs> but all said at this point it does seem as though it's a technical pause rather than oh. tactical so yeah it was, i was like well this is a long one but hopefully it all gets resolved nice and quick again i'd rather have these players at 100 percent than anything less so we can kind of maybe take a step back and I'm going to be honest, the, f the start of this, the first couple of pistols are like, oh my, these, these boys, these boys built different. They're, they, they've, they've got some wild aim and they did. And Fnatic coming in with that mad aggression on the pistol, I was getting a little nervous if I'm honest with you, but it seems to have kind of fallen into the right place, at least for Durka. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking to see if crew do side to maybe get some, it, it's, it's hard to find an answer though. Like we talk about, okay, defensive side of ag aggression, right? Well, if you go for the fight against Durka, you're going to be met by sheer force, and it seems as though he's exactly. on today. So we're about on the rest of the map. But bear in mind, Fnatic are holding a good default throughout this. So it's going to be tricky for them to find that kind of avenue of approach. You could sit deep on the site, potentially, make Fnatic take side control, but these boys are solid at executions. They have really good set pieces. This is where I think we were always constantly going to ask the question when it came to crew that we highlighted at the start... How deep is their knowledge when it comes to being pushed out of their comfort zone? Because yeah. we know they dominate when they don't get tested on these things. But if they start being pressured, how deep is that answer? Do they have that strap boot, that little bit of kind of maybe a, a go-to that they could maybe look towards? I mean, the other thing, that, that again, I was call it a criticism if you like, but talking about crew not having kind of a contingency plan behind their default, just a small thing like Magnum always playing that flank control always having the mm -hmm. tower outside uh, garage double doors and, and being there the, the the thing is fanatic are always ready to react on that every time they fight for this a lobby control or a long control if there's contact anywhere else they're ready to capitalize on it um, and actually just switching things up as soon as they then don't fight for a lobby control you've got the problem with then it's potentially three or four players stacked up but outside garage and that's so easy to overwhelm get to enjoy how cool the set looks at least that's one bonus <laughs> like we can stop being super serious until the tech pauses uh showed up they've got branded coffee cups like why don't i have that yeah, I was just saying, like, I mean, drink I cups like give me some of this yeah give me pick me up I'll, I'll hit the start game again button if you uh if you send them over but um it does seem as though the tech pause will be carrying on for a bit and we've kind of discussed our thoughts at least on this matchup but there's plenty more to be said today like look at that they can keep that red bull in the cups and everything Oh, unfair, unfortunate. I just get my little sippy cup so I don't dribble on myself. <laughs> but at this point, we do have to talk bigger picture because, again, a lot of people are touting this to be not necessarily an, uh, a huge chance of an upset, but it could have been something to maybe catch Fnatic off if they weren't on their A game. They look fine so far, but it's only map one and we're barely into it. So you then kind of look towards a bigger picture of things, right? Like, how much do we read into scrim bucks? Are you all aboard the scrim bucks conversation? Um... <laughs> like where do you sit on scrim bucks? I gotta see it now. It's a it's a difficult one. Uh, I think when when you talk I about don't half it, come on, all in, all in. Dude. No, I'm I'm staying on the fence here. I'm staying on the fence. <laughs> I, I think when you think about teams like Fnatic in particular, they're not a team to ever really show you in one series of scrims, kind of everything they've got. I just. Can we, again, I, I, I petitioned for this. I petitioned for this in EMEA. We need Boasterpov. <laughs> just the whole time. Just just a camera <laughs> fixed on Boaster's desk. He, he puts on a show. You know? The dance moves. There's, there's so much to go through. But, um, yeah, I mean, as I said, I, I think for me, when I look bigger picture now at the tournament, if Fnatic can deliver in this, I think at least we know where EU somewhat stands to an extent. And I think people have not overcommitted to their hype behind Liquid, but I think if anyone followed Liquid's trail into this tournament, this was a good run, but it was pretty dicey before that. But it does seem as though we are back underway, so I will 
shut the hell up and start talking about the game in front of us because yes there's the timer look i wait until they see the timer go down and like all right no worries no worries here we go here we go um four to two here fanatic up against crew (laughs) it's hard to bring myself back in but we will be seeing if there's now adaptation from crew their money is in a little bit of a spot of bother they have two smgs now to supplement those three rifles you actually again just talk about that again nags off the back of that flash in a lobby, just straight away invest the wall to slow things down, just in case a fast hit does come through. Now, Magnum and Dirk are going to stay put for the time being, and see elsewhere. Mystic and Oster showing a little bit of presence over towards C. Now, that's going to bring one player in the form of Delzik over towards site. Doma actually looks as if I guess they're waiting on this wall to. The fall on A, actually Dirk are going to show on long as well. So this is really interesting here. Fnatic, Atsi now don't look as if they have a good read on the setup. And nobody from crew really overstepping the mark, and leaving an opening. You can see the information wanted to be garnered by BNJ. There we go. Gets Again, though, it really is just seeing Durka, so it's kind of hard to work out how much there is on this, but the Seekers do go in, so this is pressure across the board. Now, look at this misplay. Look at this misread potentially coming out from Crew. Yeah, they're committing to these rotations towards B, but that spike is slowly creeping up through A long. This is sick work. Now, they need Durka to at least be the kind of uh, tip of the spear in this. Now, look at that. Perfect bait and switch. Put all that attention towards C. Slowly crept up towards A. That's stunning, but there is a chance of a retake here for Crew. And Boaster, way deep, still on C long. Erka now, gonna be the front man, like you said, the tip of the spear, uh, the sage wall one. Actually, both. counter lockdowns on both sides, both invested here, so it's gonna be chaos on the side. Boaster, gotta come through, potentially shut down that lockdown, Lauren. You got five seconds, one's been shut down, the other's still going two on one, so that doesn't mean Crew's gonna have to get out of there. Detained, two players now caught up in this. Fnatic re You can see a Magnum just takes the ball by the horns. Huge work from Fnatic. Denies the retake with a perfect execution. Every analyst, every fan of your thinking man's Valorant will adore what we just saw. Yeah, beautiful. And actually, in the early round, again, like I said, Fnatic didn't look as if they'd got a good read on the setup from Crew, but they run it out long enough, they show... They show presence on both sides, and that's utility invested. Now, the Astra divide comes up on C, and it, it creates this chaos. Crew are left second guessing. Now, with two players shown, the flash comes through. They actually assume the hit's coming through. And that leaves A wide open. BNJ throws a, a flash over from A Link. It doesn't actually flash, but he hears Durka dash on behind it. Now, that right there, it's just so good to watch around like that back, like you said. It, it's so well considered when you look at the early round. Oh, that was gorgeous. I could watch that time and time again. Durka going to be waiting on that heel to work out for himself. Back up to full, looking like a glass cannon, but he'll be just fine with that op. So the first time we're going to see the op coming out for him, um, a bit of a hybrid uh, when it comes to it. We kind of highlight it on the likes of Icebox, which I'm sure we'll talk about, how varied he can be in that approach. Um, but for now, the first time we get to see it here. So look and see if he can maybe punish, but it's a little dicey when you're playing it up against the uh, sheriffs. And there we go. First one to come down, Dur- Durka going to find Klaus. Just slowly but surely, you can see Fnatic trying to just work away at crew. No rush on it either. Fnatic still have about a minute to play with, so Dirk is still happy to be the first one forward. And Delzik trying to find the timing just right, but Magnum's no- oh no, the timing Ooh. that could have been yeah, that could have been yeah, bad, yeah. but it wasn't. We're fine. Yeah, this is the sort of thing I was talking about here. Magnum having complete cr- control outside double doors makes it so difficult. For any aggression, as I uh, say that, Nag's going to find two on the way in. Dome and Boaster actually trade back. But damage done on the side of crew. As Fnatic try and bully their way onto B site. There's a little bit of danger in this. BNJ does at least have light armor in that, but now he's gone. It's done for Doma. Going to find Delzik and Op could be recovered? Question mark? Doesn't look as though it will be. Um, for now, across the board, there was a little bit of danger, sure, but it was dealt with immediately. The trade did come back in eventually after that nice old two-play pickup. But at six to two, we can't be looking at bits and pieces anymore. You can't be looking at oh, but that was a nice shot. No, we got to see a little bit more than just that. And as you can see, that was Doma just shutting it down at the end. All the contingencies in place, but at six to two. As said, we can't look at those small wins the for the economy. Now. Yeah, this is this is getting a little bit rough. 
Oh, and Durk has got so much room. Coupled with that Astra utility, he can just start building up on this one. Going to try and back away a touch, get the utility worked down before he has to get involved here. Sky going to at least slow down the progress, but Magnum's got his back, and in we go already. Fnatic just bullying their way through. This is just brazen aggression, and crew don't know what to do with it. And the problem here, I mean, this is the sort of pace change we talk about with Fnatic, where they sit in the default for so many rounds and they show little bits of presence here and there that they're able to just stack up as five and like I said, just bully their way onto a site here. Isolating nags perfectly on long. B and J, nothing really to do there with two players stacked up in the sewer as well. It, it's beautiful from Fnatic Magnum, actually. Oh, there's pants down in the window there. Gotta respect it with <laughs> 10 XP now. Fine. He's fine. Look. Poster, help me out, dude. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want that fight. Actually, tell the lie, he's gone. Oh, he's still challenging. He had 10 HP, dude. He had 10 HP. What's going on? But this is the sort of thing I was talking about, right? It, you can put this under the banner of, you know, unless you set up to deal with just how many different looks Fnatic have. It's so difficult to find, you know, map control in the early round. And, you know, early on, the, the things that I kind of like to see was this this wall on contact in sewers, right? I mean, they're, they're, we haven't even talked about Mazzino's setup here. The, 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 mm. the default with the Viper will come all the way across B entry, covering sewers, and then also A long. It should give them a lot more control than they're getting. They're not really finding anything from that. So I do want to see a little bit of an adaptation, a little bit of a switch up. Because it looks like the Fnatic have got a couple of different ways to address this this formation from Crew, and I, I'll be honest, right now Crew don't look as if they have enough in the playbook to stop Fnatic. No, and this was the worry that we I think we came into this with was they seem to understand some of the concept. They run very similar compositions, but how deep is that knowledge of actually executing those ideas and Fnatic are just flexing on them now. This is this is a big display from the boys and it should be a bit of a call to the rest of the tournament saying, well, no, Fnatic are very much the real deal. They look solid. Delta can be forced away from Garage for now. Magnum can start progressing through if desired. You can see the little sky flash to help out. Boaster be the first man forward and Delzik does get spotted, but Boaster doesn't look phased by this at this point. <laughs> it's just anticipating somebody peeking through from window, but nothing. Actually, Delzik and Mazzino they come through, try and clear through Garage. Now it's just one. Delzik left solo, so we might just catch Boaster. He does indeed. Seekers come through, so got to back away now. But the Brilliant damage time. is done. First blood in favor of crew. Yeah, brilliant timing on that, but there's that midler coming out from Durka this time rather than Boaster. It does get shut down by Nagzit, but there's the res on both sides now invested. Back up to a 5v4. Durka still lost, of course, but Boaster still looking to try and progress through. Garage finds Delzik this time. Boaster. Double down on it, looking for the trouble on it. Boaster is a madman right now. Insane work from him. And Mazzino is a mile away from trying to deny this. Maybe he could find one of them, but can he deny the plant? No, Magnum's got the back, and there it is. Fnatic just flexing now. Boaster, that was beautiful. Uh, but also, just talk about it a, a little bit earlier on than that. Delzik kind of being isolated in garage. The Seekers get invested, and as soon as that presence is shown, Fnatic try and lean away. They see the two Seekers go directly towards C site. They try and isolate that one player on B. This first peak here, beautiful shot at the Klaus. And then find the wall bang as well onto Nags. Fnatic starting to feel themselves, Lauren. Yep. The confidence is looking sky high. They're starting to just, you know, it's like everyone's just having that on game here. They've started, you know, it was, a, it was a little bit of a shaky start. They lost the first two, but by that point, once those rifles came out on deck, it has been pretty much flawless at this point. And we do have the op back out for Durka, so have to keep an eye on what he can achieve with this. It does seem as though, yep, Viper going to invest in towards C, just going to lock that down. Pretty standard at this point. Again, though, we're, we're 10 rounds in and we, we haven't seen crew kind of dip their toes any further than the top of shore on a uh, that's it and it's the only area of the map i mean yes you could say you know garage and c maybe even c link double stack Delta might find one actually yeah magnum good for the trade though yeah magnum's been pretty decent at the trading the spacing's okay a little bit of a shame to lose both like that but dirk is going to be just fine finding klaus you can see mazino yeah you, you can check c long but that's not where the problem really lies at the moment and Fnatic have good map control 
B and J still going to be dedicated towards long. Going to have a chance to maybe find one on this. The shoulder peak and then the re-aggress is going to force him off the angle. But Fnatic are keeping the opponents guessing. They show towards A. They've now hit towards B potentially. This is still very much up in the air. It looks like that commitment towards B now comes in. Durka up on top, but Nagzet does finally have a good read on this. Getting a little bit trickier, but Doma going to at least keep the site safe. Spike going to go down and a 3v2 post plant. And B and J actually spoiled out here. We isolated in window. Mazzino got to get something done to draw the pressure away from BNJ. Will actually find Magnum off screen somewhere. Mazzino comes through, going to clear all the sides. So they should know that. So they've got a decent these pinch opportunity. Pants. Yeah, these, these are scary times now. Fnatic back to the wall, both of them there. Now Mazzino's going to be the first one out. Spots one. I've heard the secondary gunfire. BNJ needs to come around. Can't do it. Mazzino! Oh, tried to dig deep enough for it, but Doma oh. denies. And Fnatic just going from strength to strength now. Last round in the half. Yeah, comes down to the final round. And again, I got to say, we've gone this long without seeing crew dip their toes and fighting for any of this territory in the early round. Yes, ultimate invested there from Mazzino, and he's able to explore C long, but that's it, right? Explore, and it's solo. <laughs> Me and Jay take him at this point. Re yeah, really, really cheeky kill at the under window there. But uh, yeah, I gotta say it's it's just way too passive from crew. You cannot give Fnatic this much space to operate in. Yeah, we said it stylistically. This isn't a mismatch. This is actually a pretty close matchup in that regard. But Fnatic are known as one of the best at it. They are the ones who kind of set a lot of this concept towards meta and. For now, they're just styling on it. That's going to be the first pickup towards A long. Now, yes, Klaus does hit those rotations early, but they've now been conditioned to worry about that flank, or at least they should be, because already Boaster is right there. Peeking through on the divide, though, Mazzino going to do the best he can. He does catch the rotation. That's one bonus found for them this round. Erka going to wait out this wall. BNJ actually nearly caught off guard, but we'll still find something with the Guardian once again here. Magnum going to invest the lockdown in sewers here. So they've got to respect this and back away from sight for the time being. The flash actually to force them off that angle as well. Going to give them complete sight control here. An opportunity to set up in this post plant. Dome already. It's that wall down. It's going to be able to reinforce with plenty of time left. Nice post plants coming out. Mystic. Finding Klaus to begin with. We do see the divide coming in. The last flash put through by Mystic. Going to put it down towards CT. The retake going to start coming through, though. You can see the utility trying to divide it, but Mystic's having none of it. Dome is still there. This retake is going nowhere. <laughs> Fnatic <laughs> just holding perfect post plants. They are making crew feel so uncomfortable in every turn. And for a for a start, let's let's real talk this. 10 to 2 is a huge scoreline. Yeah, it is, especially when, uh, for me, Fnatic's win condition on this map in particular is having a good attacking half. Um, uh, we know how how punishing they can be on, on defense, how proactive they can be. I mean, their defensive executions here are just absolutely relentless. It's every single round, Lauren. Um, and really, this is the map that, yes, you can talk about Bayern being their strongest. This is the map that I think, actually, playstyle-wise, they can they can flex the hardest on. It really plays to their strengths in being able to be versatile and, and capitalize off that early round information. All right, it's got to start with a pistol. Crew fans, you've got to be hoping for it. The deep flash goes in. Mazzino going to start progress up towards C long. Keep your eyes across the map, though. We do have work towards short as well for crew. Nagzet there going to try and get a little bit of control building. And we, we've said the crew do play that quite, not necessarily super slow default, but they play a good default. They don't really get caught off by crazy aggression too often. So again, expect a little bit of a considered piece here. And Mazzino's going to punish. Brilliance <laughs> from Mazzino waiting so, so well. Yes, he took damage for it, but going to claim two and force rotations. You can see it. Sky's on the way over. Killjoy's already on the way over. And this is now going to put Doma on an island. Does He's got to find this first kill clean. Or at least find the information. We'll actually get the time in there, and he's going to wall off and respect the push for the time being, but stacked up here. He's actually going to dip back in. We'll find the no. we'll find the second as well. Doma, he's gone huge for Fnatic here, leaving them in a 2v3 retake. He's just made that possible. I don't know how he got away with it. He looked like he was dead. He was a dead man walking, but still. 
The post bomb positioning should be somewhat okay, but there's still utility. That's going to be a bit of an issue. Magnum going to try and work back in. Decides to just go for it. Gun out here. Delzik, though, going to agree him with a smile. That's Mystic gone now just in the hands of Magnum. A 1v3. Not going to happen. And crew convert the first. It's exactly what they need to build back into this game. As they need everything now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they do. And at this point, I mean, with this round deficit, you know, plays like that from Doma, that kind of unexpected to see him kind of re-peak of the short when he knows that it's it's three, potentially even four players stacked up behind that. But again, Fnatic, they have rounds to play with. They can do things like this to catch crew off guard. Still can't believe Doma got away with that. <laughs> that was absolutely nuts. Do you have the scout? Looking, you know, we've got the kind of classic purchase to come through. I'm not sure if I love that from Durka and Doma. This is... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sold on the Marshall at this point, if I'm honest. But you can see it's done absolutely nothing. And it's going to be a quick lean towards A. Yeah, the chase is on, but at this point, uh, Bulldog recovered. That's going to be for Mystic, but Boaster left with very little. And yeah, no real impact. Yes, Mazino's down, but that's about it. And let's look for them to do as much damage as possible. Especially in these early rounds here to kind of stop that momentum building for crew. Again, it's a uh, big thing crew are looking for here. They're clean round wins, right? Saving as much as they can going through, not having to worry about armor repurchases, weapon repurchases. Klaus playing perfectly off the turret there to deal with Bowstone. Mystic, I expect, actually, with that Marshall purchase, Yum. potentially to save this through. Okay, he's actually going to come through and try and die to the spike as well. Maybe keep somebody on the site. Yeah, he tries to send out a sound cue to make him believe, but not going to work and he will fall. Okay, four alive. Second round converted. Not too much damage done off the back of that investment from Durka. I mean, they've got rounds to play with. Fair enough, but I, 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 I guess why not try it? Like I'm normally such a proponent of people trying to kind of switch things up a little bit and actually go for, you know, unique plays, but these flashes just, was that a team flash or did it get, did that get popped or was it shot? I, it did look as though he was absolutely team flash, but Mystic just still able yeah, enough still to, found, buddy. to kill. Yeah, it's like, all right, mate, fair enough. No worries. Um, but rifles are out completely for Fnatic now. This is where, if there is going to be a comeback, it has to start now. There's no two other ways about it. It has to be now, and crew going to opt to stick on what they've got. They, they don't have many other options, it seems as though. So this is a huge round for crew if they want to have a chance, at least in map one. I love this as well. Durka instantly walking mid, and as soon as he gets to the bottom, Fnatic know they can lean towards A. Again, they've got the Killjoy set up, set up over on C. He can sit in garage and comfortably control that side, but Fnatic now can put a lot of emphasis if there's any presence shown. Actually, Dora investing the wall on the sewers makes it pretty much only a long the crew can make a play on for the time being. That wall expiring. Both are going to pop a star at the top of ramp there. You can see that gets popped as well, and they're going to be in a good position to greet crew on the way in here. Yeah, the fast flank from Dirk is going to be there as well, so... I want to keep my eyes on that. Mystic, happy to stand here. They're gonna, he's going to get the advantage on the fight to start with. Big trade for Mizino, but still, Doma's still in place. This is a shutdown. The flash came out, but didn't blind him enough to be able to get away with it. Boaster now on the site as well. Mizino with it all to do. A 1v3 presented. This would have to be an ace to save the side. And Fnatic deny. They keep two standing, and they get to 11. Crew needed that, and it just fell to pieces. And actually, timing-wise, that played into Crew's favor because I think Boaster actually drifted back into a linker. Uh, I guess to reset and put that star over on short when I guess the information was relayed from Mystic that, you know, yeah, actually nobody's pushing through yet. Plays in the side yet. Actually finds two on the way in. Doma will find the third as well. And again, just a really well-considered round for Fnatic off, off the back of just Walk in mid, honestly. Durka walks yep. down mid, and they know they can lean Do away from the side of the map. They, they don't care about the turret. They're just going to instantly start this. Magnum takes the fight. They are playing like the favored team here. And I like that. The confidence to come in and play to your level rather than the opponent's. Klaus is down. Durk is still pushing up here, looking for another fight. Finds it. Walks away, says, I've done some damage. I don't mind anymore. But they did lose Doma in the meantime. Now, that's actually something that could cause Fnatic some struggles. 
Yeah, I mean, coming into this matchup, I mean, the one thing Fnatic are known for are these defensive executions. Yeah, Jay, actually will find Boast up. Like I was saying, being extremely proactive like this, if, if they can keep finding success, they will just dismantle the default from crew. Oh, okay, actually, I missed it. <laughs> an opportunity to line two up there and actually find that Magnum. Gonna cast the audio cue though. He's gonna be in a have perfect I, position to catch coming out. Have sewer. I told you about Magnum's 1v3? It starts like this. He gets the first, that's a spike now. Lost, but the trade came out. It's a different round. Nagzit's gonna find it, and crew managed to stay alive. And they met the ungodly aggression, and they've managed to work their way forward. So, as it stands, 11 to 5. But I don't think we've seen a normal Fnatic round. We've had Durka walk in mid. We've had this yeah. madness that re aggress constantly. They are just pushing crew now every single time. The other thing is, is and, and usually we would see Fnatic uh, just throw everything on the line to fight for a lobby control. And it's usually, you know, Magnum to hold down mid garage and C in, in the first kind of 15 to 20 seconds in order to achieve that. Here, actually, we're seeing a complete switch up. And I guess, actually, they're respecting crew setup a lot more than I was anticipating. Dirk actually going to find Nax here very early on. The wall gets invested. Now, there's a little bit of danger to this round, looking at the armor with Doma, looking at a little bit of light armor with Magnum. There is a rifle with Durka, who's got his HP back up now. And you can see Crew now taking the time. Fnatic, would you dare go? I, I guess you don't have much to lose. You want to try and thread the needle, find that timing, but Crew seems so aware of the possibility. Klaus is going to be on red alert after those last couple of rounds. Yeah. Crew really need to be watching everything. They can't take it for granted. Yeah. Boaster's already going walkabouts in mid. He's got he's got Durka by his side as well. So as crew do progress towards A, there is going to be that little bit of a notion in the back of their minds going, okay, maybe there's a time limit on this. Okay, and there's a flash. So information found for Fnatic, but Mystic's going to be outgunned in this one. Flash comes back in from BNJ. And actually, investment of the ult, but with the slow towards short, going to deny quick progress here. And Fnatic can just wait at the back of sight. Yeah, two players being tucked in hell makes it really difficult for crew. They've got to come through and deal with these players. They don't have sight control just yet. Durka would have no. had in hand as well. The third on the round for He him. can't. He can't get away with this. How on earth has he been allowed to get away with this? Oh. Fnatic, turn it to 12. And in any essence of crew, just for a second, having a lapse in judgment, Fnatic punish from the back lines. Durka finding the space to operate when he really shouldn't have been able to. Yeah, and I mean, with the lockdown being invested, all, all they need to do is have somebody come up long. And they, they spot that out. They spot that there's going to be two players in hell. Just, yeah, really, really strange. Um, but Doka gets away with murder, you got to say it. Finding of course. the third on the round initially there and then They're finding the fourth. Mid. And They're walking mid. Invested as well. Doka's just walking mid at map point and he's got two kills. He's on fire right now and he wants to keep going, but Klaus denies it, extinguishing the flames so they're starting to build through mid. Doma though on the push as well. This is dominance from Fnatic at 13 to 5. Map 1 is a wrap. <laughs> and that Surprises anything standing out to you here? Because this looks part of the course for me. Yeah, it does. It's um, actually the only, the only real difference here is... Uh... Actually, no, no, apologies. Yeah, Mazzino is on the Viper here. And again, composition-wise, uh, it's going to be difficult really to make any sort of expectations on the side of crew um, with this obviously not having any fresh data to go off from the Challengers finals at least. But uh, no surprises on the side of Fnatic. You know, the last few times we've seen them play Icebox, it's been Durka doing Durka things, right? Um, and actually, you know, Shower as well, Doma flexing onto the Sage. We know actually that's, that's more of a recent change for Fnatic, and it's looked really, really good for them. Okay, so a little bit of a mirror matchup. Quite like that. I guess you get to see the... I guess it's not the agent that makes the difference, it's the player behind it, which is always a nice concept to keep in mind. And it does look as though we are almost ready to get this one started up. Now, all eyes turn towards Crew to try and bring this one back. Now, keep in mind... This is Fnatic's choice coming into it, and I think that we all said if it goes to a third map, that's where maybe those win conditions for crew could kick in, but they need yes. to close this down. Fnatic could be kicking things off on the attacking side and crew on the defensive side. I see early on, Zeno and Delzic. Actually, Delzic going to wall up and potentially get onto the top of green here, but at least for the time being, these 
The double wall on B lane going to give them lots of control. Dale's like, actually going to opt to play close contact with Mazzino. Mm. I mean, it's a one and done if they get checked on, but Mazzino straight up and over finds Boaster. That's a little bit of a shocker. Boaster's probably not happy with that. Going to have to peel away and... Again, that Viper Wall is doing wonders for them here. Magnum, yes, can keep patrolling on this, make sure there's no aggression on the other side. But at this point, Fnatic are looking for their first step in. Zeno spotted again, but this plays well for Delzik. Just being kept quiet in the cubby. Straight up Harry Potter here under the stairs. <laughs> and Magnum's slow progress, but now going to be noted. <laughs> the alarm bot actually chasing Magnum <laughs> all the way back through the base. they got to respect it for the time being. Fnatic actually going to send a spike over towards A site now. And I think they've identified that at least the weaker side of this setup from crew in terms of numbers. Max actually comes through, finds a headshot, but no kill. And the spike will get planted uncontested behind that wall. Look, we have seen though crew on these pistols have been pretty solid. Uh, the vast majority of their rounds. Delzik though does lose out to Mystic, who's keeping this one in check. But Mazino's also doubled through. down. Yeah, and I don't... They're kind of checking on it, but they haven't noted him at all. Dirk is still here as well. And look at Doma just keeping himself quiet, surrounded by crew players. Nags is going to find Dirk, and Mazzino does find Mystic, but keep your eyes on Doma. What can he do from here? Now, going to be feeling the burn. Has to try and do something. <laughs> Nags denies. Now Magnum left. In a 1v4, denial would be difficult. Does get the first cleanly, but the defuse is coming in. Whether he wants it or not, he can't do anything about it. And crew going to keep that pistol record high, at least. Yeah, it's unfortunate as Mazzino just slipped through, and I, I think that... Nags was, was picked up, and the, the timing was actually really unfortunate for Fnatic, right? Because they find that kill, and they think, oh, there's probably going to be one more flanking, right? Mazzino's able to just sit and survive on Bell. And you can see Mystic actually resetting for the lineup. See, right here, does get it off, but unfortunately, doesn't find that kill. Only four shots left in the classic as well for Mazzino, so <laughs> right down to the wire there. But well played, nonetheless, on the double flank. Now, by coming back in, it's, it's a buy from Fnatic on this, as much as they can, at least. Marshal out, Sheriff spits and pieces, SMGs as well with light armor, then they're not going lightly into this one, and a tag is going to be a little bit of a problem. Nagzek can back away, try and get that HP back up, but now getting put on notice, they know something's astray, and Fnatic trying to just take map control here, take site control. You can see the dividing line coming out, at least from Viper here, trying to keep the enemies further back. The wall going to keep safe for the spike plant. And now into the post plant. This is where Fnatic can become an exceedingly strong team. You can see them reset back now and rely on the strength of this post plant utility. Let's see. Kill comes through initially. Nanoform going to force them off that initial diffuse tap. And crew have got to come through and clear this here, Lauren. Yeah, they have to get aggressive. You can't sit back on this. We know these post plants, you've got to fight them. There's no two ways about it. Now, Boaster and Dirk are the last two alive here. And the flank from Boaster could be big. He does just about see the cape, but as the player taps away so oh. gently, gets him off the spike defuse, but it is on halfway. And now all three start flooding through. There's nothing he can do. And Klaus comes back around, and they do convert the second up against a bit of a force buy. Yeah, I mean, Fnatic they come through, they, they, they get the plant, and really with a purchase like this, they're looking to get that clean spike plant, come away, reset, and play clean on that post plant. But right there, I mean, crew are able to... I guess damage control wise, back up, respect it initially, and then come through and, and use the numbers to their advantage. Just, I guess, take the fight with the right players early on. Poison's gone. Oh, I copy. Voiceover lines in slow mo just really bring me life. <laughs> Poison's gone. <laughs> <laughs> For now, though, back on a little bit of a piece together purchase. Uh, Durka may be opting to try and kind of keep his economy working in the right direction. He is one of those hybrid oppers. He does not heavily depend on the op on this map, especially. It's something you'll get used to. He will run a rifle. There's been a couple of really nice statistic pieces done about him and yeah. specifically his work on it, so don't be too worried in that regard. On the other side, going to stick on what they've got. A couple of Spectres out, Sheriff and Mazzino and Bulldog for BNJ to try and deal with this. Now, for now, it does just come down to Mazzino on this corner. Going to get the contact full back away, depend on the utility, just to create a bit of a one-way that he can utilize, and just slows down the push if Fnatic tried to maybe springboard off the back of that. And for the time being, Fnatic have to respect the one-way, but still only Nags and Mazzino over here, and only one member of Fnatic noted, so I guess that's why they're, they're keeping one mid and two on A, but Boaster swings out, finds the freebie, and... Straight away, they're going to go for this plant. 
The rotations weren't leaning early. They were pretty far back. Now, Boaster wants to take space, and he gets it. That's huge work from Boaster. Now he can infiltrate enemy lines. He is behind the line of defense that they'd love to work back in from. Now, three on the play back through. BNJ just received attack. That sets up Boaster. He just needs one of these shots to come through. He can't make it work for towards Nagzed, but... Now that's the first line of defense broken through. This retake still got some time on it. This is not going to be easy. Durka happy to take fights. Information found for BNJ. But now we are down to the three that did only have those sheriffs and the utilities there. But Nags is trying to get aggressive. He knows how to fight these post plants. He's doing whatever he can for it. Magnum needs to face this. The defuse is on halfway. Takes a second and they're running out of time. Magnum tries to buy it. I think the round is all wrapped up. They somehow turn this around. It's actually a really, really well-timed utility usage. Again, we know exactly what Fnatic are going to do in a situation like this. They're going to reset back to lane. A couple of players take close contact and try and run the clock down on yellow. And they do just that. I mean, Doma gets picked up for free, for basically from the top rope, right? Um, and actually, on the back of that, Nags pops the Blade Storm, to, I guess, to take full control of lane. But at that point, the damage is already done, right? They, they have these snake bites. It's got like a four or five second hang time. And... Right there, just mathematically, it becomes impossible for crew to recover this round, regardless of what they can get down on lane. I'm surprised they didn't sit the defuse. If I'm honest, they had, what, two on the well, way back uh, in. They got it halfway, sure, maybe I missed something there. I, I don't think they can stick the half because they were both down to, like, sub-50 HP. So mm. I, I don't actually think they had the HP to do it. Interesting. But two to one, though, Fnatic are going to take that every day of the week. They're more than happy. And now you can see the economy has been kind of... Shaking up a little bit here. Crew going to be working with a little less than ideal. Three lighter buys coming in. SMG. Or two SMGs, excuse me. A Marshall and then two rifles, at least with Delzik and Mazzino. Think of them as the heavy hitters. Jump peek on the corner. A little bit of info found. Not too much, though. And it will be waiting on the other side. The killjoy here. Klaus. Maybe here in the spike plant. Can't deny it, though. Uh, it comes through behind that double wall setup, and again, Fnatic going to get that clean plant. No damage down on the way in. They're going to be able to sit very deep now. Once again, expect Durka and Doma to try and run the clock down here. Force crew to push all the way behind yellow. And actually, Durka comes through. Doma as well. They're going to find three kills. You got to love Doma when he has rounds Doma! like that. Doma just goes full turret mode. Does not need support. Does not need help. Just goes straight to clutching out. Easily done for some. Doma making it look so, so simple there. All lining up for him, and he just makes it look easy. 2-2 two two now. Fnatic finding a little bit of that form, and I want to watch this back. So this was just oh. off the back of that trade coming in. Just straight up man-moding this. Look at that aim. Dude. I Nasty. mean, this is the thing. This is the thing, right? The beauty of this setup is you have two players like Durka and Doma, the ones that are like, well, yeah, we'll put them on yellow. If they find some kills, it will kill some time. But actually, they just come through and absolutely destroy crew before they even get that retake going. Well, old South for Durka. We've seen this before. He loves to counter any oppers that might try and get a little saucy with the peaks down towards B-Long. But he's got a lot of attention towards <laughs> middle here. Delzik's Del oh, close. Side. They're both super close. Durka, hyper aware of his angles, so going to dip back around, trying to play it as safe as possible. Now, again, they are up against pistols and only light armor on BNJ, so not too much of a threat. But let's see if they can keep this clean. Durka going to at least win the angle now and start building up. But you could probably see a quick flank from those two pushing up in mid if they feel bold enough. But even then, you still got Magnum lingering around. That's the thing here with, uh, I was going to say, yeah, they need to find something on this this mid push or come across and back up Mazzino because he's going to get overwhelmed very quickly. And actually Mazzino able to escape effectively. Delzik now not able to escape. It's tagged on the Aldo and Durka there to punish him. Spike planted. Durka's just taken so much map control, so much space is his. He's such a nuisance. Yeah, he loses his life, but by now, this is where you have to see if crew can find some more. They've maybe cracked open the first step. That's big, though. Doma goes down. Now, the last three, let's look at these positions that they currently <laughs> hold. They're not ideal, but Magnum, there's that mid lurk from him coming in super valuable at this point. Poster takes the fight, loses the fight. Crew are doing everything they can for this Mystic. Didn't need to go for it, <laughs> but he just styles on them in the end. The Diffuse was kept safe regardless. The utility still in play, but Mystic just making it look stylish, even though Crew did get close. All right, so the big thing to note here, and I was just about to say, they need to find something from that mid push because 
again, here's another round where they've not been able to pressure this deep setup on B lane, right? We know, expectation-wise, they must anticipate what's coming, right? They get the clean spike plant. They know they're going to reset all the way back and just play utility. The, the hit needs to come through much earlier from crew. Yes, pistols on that round, a frenzy, a sheriff here or there, but on the buy round, I want them to see. I want to see them adjust and address this post plant. Nags it straight on the op here. Let's see how he looks with this one. Be sitting deep towards back of A. Rinse and repeat. It looks like somewhat for Fnatic, still leaning towards that B site. Klaus could be the one tasked with dealing with this. Yeah. That's actually as well with Magnum sat here again. The Viper's bit invested on A. They Magnum can kind of read into this that there's not really going to be any aggression. Mystic actually going to respond with the Viper's bit of his own. On B, over default, Hunter's Fury also invested from Boaster. It's going to allow this plant to come through. And once again now, I want to see Cruz send somebody flanking. They need to come through and pressure the back line. Yeah, but by now, Dirk is already finding frags. You, you could have maybe seen that flank coming out from Mazzino, maybe. But even then, look at them. They're just funneled in. Both Killjoys investing. This is messy as anything. So many ults online right now, but Boaster doesn't care. Neither does Durka. This is going to be crew having to back away. They have nothing to work out of this one. They can maybe make it costly, but that's not the win that you want here. Yeah, it's time to get out of there, but you could already see the hunt sign to begin. Mystic's happy to try and take some of these rifles away if they can get to them in time, but so much was just invested in that round, and it still works out at a 4v2, and it's going to be down to just one rifle remaining for Delzik, and Magnum's closing in as well. This is brutal. And the problem right there is you invest a lockdown on B, it only gives you control of sight. Now, knowing that Fnatic are going to play on lane, that lockdown in lane is always going to yield a better result because they have to come through and push. And especially if they get planted, you know, one second offset, mm -hmm. it's always, always the attacker's lockdown that's going to last longer. Oh, that's straight above the ult. Durka just... Right there. Actually, it was on... It, was it was actually on yellow? No, it wasn't. It was on lane. Apologies. So the, the minimap actually on rotation there. Call me off guard. I was like, they actually put the lockdown on yellow for a second there. <laughs> Four to two. And we need to see crew break the trend of the rifle rounds just not being their friend. Yeah. We really need to see them get a rifle round on the board here. And it looks like Mazina wants to take matters into his own hands. Could try and get aggressive and lose his life. Mystic happy to take the attention away. It looks like they want to get aggressive and... They're trying to do this at range against rifles. That's yeah. lovely from BNJ, but it, it doesn't make for much at this point. Nags are going to have to fall away from this too. The aggression, yes, it found one. Not particularly that impressive at this point. No, and uh, <laughs> the fact that the first time we're seeing crew really explore any early round territory is, is on a round like this with this purchase is... Yeah. Kind of unfortunate to see. Yes, it's it's a big risk on a buy round, but, but they have to. They, they, they have to fight for this. They can't keep giving up the plants. It just plays into Fnatic's hands. It's BNJ actually going to land a nice couple of shots with the Sheriff there onto Durka. Remove one weapon off the table at least. Magnum there to greet Klaus in mid. BNJ actually got the armor here, so could potentially go hunting. I don't think actually on a round like this. Okay. Not going to matter at all. <laughs> Domus, Domus says no. Here's, uh, here's the uh, thing, right? Like, here's, here's the actual kind of scary pack to me is that Fnatic haven't been doing anything wild. We've seen a solid no, VTEC no. so far with a little bit of a late mid hold coming out from Look Mag at the numbers, Lauren. Look at the yep. numbers. Like, it's... There's not a lot of this... In terms of actual kills, these are going back and forth. It, it's the fact that, like I said, clean rounds come through. Fnatic don't even need to fight in the post plant. They don't need to. go again crew uh, look they have timeouts available i'd love to see them call a tactical timeout if they really start feeling they don't have a simple answer to this and it looks like a different look coming out this time as well we spoke about what they traditionally like do this. but you can see the switch up it looks like maybe off the back of the chance of that op purchase coming out or just simply thinking it's time to go for the switch up here and don't oh, oh, does it what he just ferrari peaks an op like it just got what? deleted the body bag's just being zipped D up as we speak that's nasty from durka that's the first time somebody's played on top of yellow as well. So Dirk has literally just full swung. Oh Unreal. my word. Unreal stuff. Must be nice to have someone like him. But now Klaus, 
again, we haven't seen too many of these rifle rounds lean towards this A site, so crew are going to have to be sitting a little bit deeper. They've lost part of the site control enough of the extent that they'll probably give up the plan, but Fnatic taking a pause for thought here, clearing utility as they go, not in a massive hurry just yet. They're actually playing this deep enough. Actually, Klaus will come through, find a trade. I was going to say, I think they're playing deep enough to allow the Hunter's Fury to come through, but no tag on the plant here, and... BNJ will find the second and third, and the res comes through. So, man advantage in favor of Mystic's crew on this retake. Up. Mystic is still alive. Keep your eye on this post plan. This is where things start becoming a problem. They do have the extra body to put down to at least try and pull this retake off. BNJ could be the first one forward. Trade does comes in. Delzik stays alive. Mazzino does find Magnum is on Durka now. Defuse could be toyed with, not just yet. Durka just checks on it for a second. Goes back. No way. Dives out. No way. Up. Huge work from Durka again. He starts the round with a bang and he closes it. Just shuts the book on them. Oh, oh my word. What a round from him. Like you said, opens it up with an insane... Insane headshot over on B lane, closes things out. The Red Bull clutch coming from Dirk here. The Blade Storm absolutely on peak. It's beautiful. Unbearably good. Durka has had a performance. Welcome to the big leagues, boys, girls. This is something else, truly. This this is Durka saying. Yeah, no worries, boys. I got you. I got you. We got this. And crew, yeah, they can get aggressive right now. We see them do this in their kind of half buys, their force buys, but they need this to land. And Dirk is just on one. Everything's just feeling right for him. We do see the Vipers pushed up in the form of Mazzino, taking a little bit of space. But keep in mind, they've got the SMGs, they've got Sheriffs, they've got Frenzies. It ain't much to play with, even with this slightly above average position. This could be nice. No, Dirk just turns on him. This guy is having a series now. He's just feeling it. He wants to just go in, and they might as well here. They've got the numbers. So, a 4v3 towards the site. So, Delzik and Nags are actually pretty close already. On default here. Delka goes exploring. We'll find another one. He spots one out coming through from Kitchen. Klaus. Not much longer for this world, I think, if Durka decides to swing once again. Actually, as I say, Dave, we'll find the Sheriff headshot. But all the meanwhile, Magnum got himself a beautiful lurk all the way into Kitchen here. Going to be able to cut off this rotation and all the... This information plays into Fnatic's favor. They have control of a site, get the plant down for free, and Magnum can just play deathmatch here. And look, if you're new to Fnatic, if you maybe haven't watched too much EU Valorant, hey, look, I don't blame you. I get it. We, we, NA's exciting. They have all the flashiness, but you've got players like Durka out here, right? Now, these were the firepower upgrades that Fnatic invested into. Durka and Magnum, they brought, they brought them on at a really risky time. This was a huge investment of them to try and bring this firepower. Now, okay. Faust does very nicely. But uh, very unlikely the round goes anywhere other than expected, of course. So at this point, <laughs> you see both just, just check in. I just wanted to make yeah. sure I could hear the sound yeah. then. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I've, I've seen weirder things. It's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. But once again, this was Fnatic investing in two not unknown players, but not, you know, metal tested players. You think about unproven, some of the other names. Up. Exactly, word. exactly. Unproven players. And they were young guns coming in who definitely caught the attention of other EU teams. But... At this point, they are worth their weight in gold. You've already seen that come through. So Enemy big kill. moves from Fnatic at the right time. The plug and play right players here. of these guys just looking fantastic. Look at that snap from him. And now, again, we, we ask the question, crew in these rifle rounds, where have they been? Well, once again, then, Mazzino goes exploring B lane with a Spectre. I, I, I want to see a little more of a setup. Now, the problem is, the one time they've they've tried to make an adjustment, Nagset got absolutely destroyed with that operator. Again, you're going to see him post up deep here on B. Uh, but again, it's, I don't think it really addresses the problem at hand, right? Which is Fnatic getting so much control on front yep. site, on B, that they're able to just run the clock down. They're able to just reset. They're able to just basically wait for crew to make a move. And every single time it's this kind of disjointed retake where there's, there's no real utility investment. It's just a, a couple of swings out on the back of Mazzino's wall if he's mm -hmm. still up. There's, there's no real challenge towards the back line of Fnatic. No, they're, they're not displacing any of it. It's, again... Uh, they're, to the extent, they're challenging the post plants, but even then, I want it to be earlier. I want them to... Exactly. They need a little more to it, a little bit more of a fire burning underneath them. 
the, the thing is, Mazzino's happy to give up B-side, which I like. Again, he's, it's not as if he's he's dying and leaving it wide open. But the fact that he's backing away and then everybody comes through mid, they're all stacking up in kitchen, they're stacking up towards Snowman. There's nobody coming through to challenge Magnum on that lurk. And he has so yeah. much information, so much information. And at that point, Fnatic don't need to move at all. The fact that Durka and Doma keep just... I'll, I'll say it, uh, <laughs> overstepping on yellow and finding a lot of value doing it. Don't get me wrong. They're, they're finding kills consistently doing it. But right there, it, it, again, it comes down to the fact that crew just peeking one by one in the retakes. And they're peeking with the wrong players. It's Durka and Doma, which don't matter at all when you think bigger picture. Yeah, and they're happy to be frontline players. They'll, they'll take that hit. That's, that's absolutely fine. They'll just try and, you know, as I said, put body on the line to protect Mystic. But... At 7-2, the tactical timeout does finally dissipate. Crew, hopefully oh they've come up with an idea. We've got to see what they change up, what they do in this, because they have been overrun. We need to see a stop to the rot. Seven rounds sitting in the pocket of Fnatic, two towards Crew. And it looks like they are trying to show a lot of presence towards Long here. They're looking for those early fights. Maybe this is a switch up, and they lose to Durka. For now, he stays alive with 56 HP. There's still another player here. Finally, Mazzino gets it. The double down from Mazzino's big. That's map control, fought for and won. But Klaus is going to hear all this. He knows this player's coming his way, and now there's a time limit on it. What does he do? He looked lost. Boaster? He looked... I don't know how Boaster gets away with it, one, and how, two, Klaus just looked like he wasn't ready for it. At this point, now we're down to two. BNJ and Mazzino. Magnum spots him out on the flank. <laughs> Fnatic, just, they're all encompassing right now. As finally Mazzino wins that fight on long, the instant flex on the push towards yeah. A. It's, it's beautiful to watch as uh, Mazzino's getting a court knife in hand, but the contingencies in place from Fnatic, it's, it's actually crazy. Again, you know, in another... In another scenario, Durka finds value there and finds the, the kill onto Mazzino, finds the opening on B. Yes, Delzik comes through and actually repeating what they did in the pistol round, right? To try and contest control of top green and Mazzino puts down actually a, a snake bite on there and Delzik comes through to try and challenge inside the cloud burst. Um, somehow, again, uh, through all that, Durka still wins the 1v1. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> again, that's a different story. They, they, they find that, Mazzino comes through, finds two kills and they're set up to then just yeah. completely collapse onto A. Okay, we go again. Let's see if this can maybe change something up here. Alt now invested as well. Several alts invested into this one as best they can. Crew are going to throw everything that they can into this. However, no early victory off the back of it. Maybe thwarting a little bit of that B lane control. But at this point, we have to wait and see where Fnatic take themselves to. The first time they've been kind of fought away from the extremities of this map. And we see the same adjustment here with Mazzino over towards A side with the Viper's Pit. Going to try and garner some... Territory control. He's going to spot out the alarm bot inside. Actually, going to get dealt with as well. But three players of Fnatic stacked up outside. And actually, it's Mystic and Durka tucked in behind the wall in tube. So again, a little bit of a, a little bit of a fake here from Fnatic to show some presence on A, as if they're going to contest Mazzino's ult. I mean, this is a whole new look to things as well. Uh, we haven't seen a mid piece coming out from Fnatic. Yes, maybe crew have addressed the issues in the Beautiful. previous rounds, but let's see how much space they get here. 30 seconds left. Down to 30. That mid piece. Oh no! Tells it gets caught in the middle of it. Klaus and B and J still gonna do well though. Klaus playing so well, trying to make up for all the problems that they've had here. Nags it. Just with the pistol in his hand, just trying to buy the time. 15 seconds. Where is that spike? It is with Mystic right now on towards the site itself. Tries to get a quick plant through, and it looks like so he's going to get it. Klaus is right on by. Nags it by his side. There is a 3v2 now. Play back in. Zeno just trying to keep this one in check, and you can see the, <laughs> the pit's a little unique here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but this, this Viper's pit is actually pretty oh, toxic. No. It, it's Mystic. Oh, so I don't, I don't, awkwardly They can't get up. on it. This is horrible, and Domer is just being such a problem. He doesn't even need to repeat this. He's just biding time, keeping the pressure away from Mystic again. And you can see Mystic don't need, though, help. He's fine. Nags it goes down. Klaus could be down to one HP. <laughs> and just, yeah, there's, there's nothing to be done. This is this is one of those strats. It's one of those little pieces, those pocket pieces from Fnatic that just terrify teams, and for the right reasons. This was a switch up. This was a bit of a different look. We'd seen those pieces Last run through towards dead. B constantly, a little Last switch up towards the A hit. The but then that mid look coming out the setup coming through mystic again great play on the viper yeah it is and, and the big thing here is fanatic showing versatility versus crew that are just unable to 
really show us, I mean, yes, comparison to Haven, they're showing a few different setups here on defense, but it's their inability to adapt to what's going on. Yes, they can find these kills, but like I said, it comes back to the contingencies. Fnatic are so well set up to deal with any variable that doesn't even go in their favor, they still recover the round. I don't think we need to sugarcoat the pill on this one. This has not been a good display yet from Crew, and I feel as though they're running out of options and time and rounds. And 9 to 2, you can hope, you can pray all you want, but at this point, the rifle rounds are just evading you. Quick plant comes in. Doma does manage to keep his life for now. I don't know if escape's going to be an option, but Dirk is going to try and bail him out. Nags it on the other side. And it's going to be Delzik to find Doma. So into the post plant we go. Let's see if they can disrupt this. First layer of utility now toyed with. Klaus did find Durker in the meantime. Now there's going to be further layers to this Mystic. Invests his piece of utility. Mazzino needs to get involved in this now. Uh, Lurk comes through though. Magnum perfectly positioned and actually going to be able to put the turret on the top. Mystic and Magnum combined to find the final two. And it's just so beautifully considered from so, Fnatic. Again, Magnum decide. peels all the way away yes. from that execute. And the entire time, nobody from crew comes through mid. Nobody once again comes to challenge Mystic, comes to challenge the backline, and Magnum absolutely punishes now, them for that. I want to talk about Magnum a little bit as well, because yes, Dirk is obviously a highlight player, right? He makes the, you know, flashy plays in this, but the work that Magnum has been doing in mid as just being able to deny those flanks, be a constant nuisance, always showing presence towards A if they're going for those B pieces, basically stopping them from ever really being able to do too much, and then him being late game proactive yes. is yeah. really very impressive. He's shown yeah. really, really um, high diligence in that, and I think it's a skill that may not be rewarded enough, but I want to highlight here that Magnum's been playing his role very well. Now, on the other side, we know crew are pistol gods, apparently, but again, they need to get all of the others that follow. Come through. Actually, the wall going to go up through mid, and they're going to try and split through onto B. They might actually get a clean plant and connector here. Magnum. Pop one down, poster. Okay, somehow finds a kill. The shot down to Nagzet there. I don't know if that was a, a line up onto default, but the plant wasn't even there. Yeah, I'm not sure how that happened, but Magnum now going to be fed information. Zeno. <laughs> Trying to work around this. This is messy. It's scrappy. It's an unorthodox piece. When Delzik going to find another. And this is looking like crew release trying the best this time. Mazzino surprised. But again, keeps his cool down to two now. And the angle's perfect for Mazzino. There's been... Wait. Oh, okay. We're all good. We're all good. No threats came through. No problems came around. Everything was kept in line. I get scared when I see like a little sage just fusing away. But no problems. It's all <laughs> good. It's all good. Two walls yeah, I'm well. like, hold on. No, 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 no. It's all good. It's all gravy. We're all gravy here, but it was scrappy for a little bit of time. But again, crew and the pistols are great. Yeah, really quick piece coming through. And again, there's not an awful lot Fnatic can really do to react to that. Again, they kind of just have to scrap, right? They, they just have to take that brawl over the execute. Let's see, this time around, I know uh, actually a bit of a different force up, but Sheriff's got a shorty on the side of Mystic, actually. Again, one thing to keep an eye on here, Lauren, mm. will be how Fnatic deal would be lane. You can see here, again, on the back of no contact shown, actually, Mazzino playing very, very deep, actually, to just deal with any threat coming through. But especially on the buy rounds, I want to keep an eye on how Fnatic deal with this B lane control on defense. Clean work so far from crew here, coming up with two good kills. Spike's slowly working through, and yeah, Mazzino very aware that they might be trying to get a little bit cheeky with this, but not going to be going for much of it. And waiting down below, there is Mystic with an interesting choice of weapon. Nagzet will be tilted off the face of the earth. Yep, off the back of that. You don't love to see it unless you're a Fnatic fan, tries to dive back in for more, but not going to get it. And now Boaster. Last one here. Uh, does get Mazzino, but okay, two kills. It's not, it's, it's not enough to really make me worried for Crew's economy. They should be okay going forward. No spike plant to really write home about. But at this point, we can't talk small picture. You have to talk big picture when you've only got four rounds, right? Like, that's the, the sketchy yeah. part. It's like, yeah, we can talk about the economy, kind of the effect of it, trying to have to you know, work out how to balance out the rifles you're going to be investing into. When do you invest into them? Because, again, you can't really afford to play long con here. You've got to be all in as soon as possible. And this is technically your bonus round, but you really need this one. 
Yeah. They they really do. The six round deficit here. And they got a William clean as well. Fantastic. This is a five man lean from crew. They're gonna try and walk through Maze here underneath Mystic. He's actually gonna get spotted out by the Alder and gotta come away and back up, but early information at least. Gathered here, and both strategy a perfect crossfire to deal with that dash stream from Nags. Oh, the crossfire beautiful from Mystic and Bosa there. Three kills on the round already. Klaus and BNJ got to back up, but the spike's already lost. Yeah, it's deep into enemy territory, and the back's already covered. Yeah, the turret's there, but it doesn't matter. That whole retreat is covered off. They cornered in. BNJ and Klaus. They needed some damage, maybe a spike plant, get some rifles away, get some upgrades. That would have been perfect. And crew watching their chances here slowly just dissipate, slip through the fingers. Klaus and BNJ, what can you do with this? Doma, right, waiting. Mystic tucked in on the corner. Player standing. And well, BNJ left. gonna have to just face the music here. Flawless round coming through. Prime gaming. Flawless round at that as well, but that's the. I, I guess the most heartbreaking way for crew to go through that one. You, you'd wanted those small bonuses, those little benefits that could maybe echoed into the next rounds, but now you're facing uh, a disaster in front of you, which is Fnatic at full force with 11 rounds by their side and you not having the bonus of at least a couple of rifles to bring through. One enemy remaining. Yeah, this is, uh, seconds left. This is when it gets really, really tricky for crew because uh, effectively, Requested one more round and that's gonna pull together a buy on this one. Only ultimate available on the side of Mazino and no decent progress elsewhere. Durka. Again, look at it here. I'm gonna lean away with Durka playing this DP, gets on top of green, and actually now Doma can drift all the way away from B side. Especially now with Durka finding Mazino oh, in the back line. Uh, well Mazino was playing spawn again. Durka well aware of that from the previous rounds and he's happy to be this pest. He can be the nuisance. Yeah. He can keep yeah. them constantly paranoid about the back lines, let alone what could be happening in middle through tube potentially. And now they're having to back away. They've lost time potentially. They have to re-clear this if they do want to go back towards B. And there's threats. You can see them having to shoulder peek in, jiggle peek the corners, trying to hope for the best here, but waiting a little bit deeper now will be Durka. He does have as well, I think it's Doma by his side. So the D&D &D combo. But no, they opt to fall the other way, kind of re-aggress towards A, maybe feeling as though they've pulled enough of a rotation. Magnum did go towards B, so they do get at least now a favorable fight towards the A site. Still got the wall, so potentially left. can run through and try and brute force this plant. I'll say that, Mystic actually gonna fall off the rip here. Klaus finds that one, the wall will be invested on backside. Both are actually able to poke a hole in it. It's an awkward plant, actually, by Delzik. It's tucked in the corner, so they can't actually play deep. It's not in sight. There's actually the Hunter Fury going to come through and nearly actually catch in three members of crew there. But elsewhere, Magnum, Gurkha, Doma, all fine kills. Delzik, last man Only up now. He has to just stand and fight. That's all he's got left. Oh. Booster outdoes him. It's going to be 12 on the board for Fnatic. And bear in mind, this ain't just map point. This is now going to be match point coming through crew. This is going to be heartbreaking at rounds time if they can't find an answer soon. As Fnatic have looked formidable thus far. There were question marks. We definitely theoried maybe a little bit of nerves could come into play. So these younger players, would it hinder yeah, them? Would yeah. it hamper them? But no, none of that has happened. They have looked exemplary so far. They really have. And, and on a fundamental level, uh, the, again, the other thing where we've seen Fnatic kind of fall short in some series is where they've just kind of lost that discipline factor. And right here, everything's so well considered. Like I said, the contingency is in place for everything they're doing, even if they lose one or two members. Oh, Durka. He's pushing up. Keeps himself at least unchecked for now. If you crest that corner, he knows that they're right around there. He's seeing a pixel out of place in this man. That might be all he needs. Sees one. That's going to be the start. The oh, second. The no. Reaper from up above. Durka just like a guillotine right now. Slicing through crew. But Delzik <laughs> at least puts up a fight back here. But you can see it just looks like right now Fnatic are just going to take this from them. Rip it out of their hands. Magnum happy to take the fight as Nagza is the last one alive. And Fnatic destroy crew in the first game of Masters. It's just simply outclassed. That's the only way to describe that crew. 
Not showing a complete inability to deal with what Fnatic bring to this game. Uh, like I said, Icebox 